I'm Julie Rader, and I am absolutely honored to share this practice with you. It's a wall practice. It's a practice I love. I really love using the wall. Um, so just find a space, any wall in your home, and bring your mat right up to it. I wanted to get up close for a moment because I'm going to be a little bit backlit when I'm practicing, but you'll be able to see everything I'm doing. Thank you for joining me today. Okay, so... Uh, come all the way out along the wall. You might want to place a blanket there. And just come into a comfortable seat. Wiggle around as much as you need to to feel the sit bones root down through whatever you're sitting upon. And with the sit bones rooting do down, grow tall through the spine, lift through the waist and the rib cage. Let the shoulders relax back. Just invite them back toward the wall without actually leaning against the wall. And then palms down for grounding, thumb touching the nail of the index finger. Teeth are separated, crown of the head lifting. Breath deepening. In and out, only through the nose. Become aware of this moment that you've set aside for you to feel more peaceful, vibrant, healthy, and strong. At the back of the crown of the head, lift you even taller. Then keeping both shoulders along the wall, bring your left fingertips down to the ground by keeping the left arm on the wall. Right arm along the wall. Inhale, sweep it all the way up. And exhale, lean up and over to your left. Root the, the right sit bone down more. Bend the left elbow. Keep both shoulders along the wall and breathe deeply. Deepen the breath. And keep rooting down through the right sit bone. As you extend even more, keep both shoulders along the wall. One more breath. And look down. Inhale, come up. Keep the right shoulder along the wall. Exhale, reach the right hand down, keeping it along the wall. Inhale, left arm up. Sweep it up, back of the arm, touching the wall. And exhale, reach up and over to the right. Both shoulders down, root down through the left sit bone. Breathe deeply, so you might need to stay up taller to keep both shoulders back. Maybe lean a little deeper, but honor what you need. Left sit bone reaching down. Breathe deeply, both shoulders pulling back. Press through the left sit bone even more. And look down. Inhale, coming all the way up. Both shoulders on the wall as you exhale, sweep the left arm down. Switch the crossing of your legs. And then this time, start keeping the right hand down. Left sit bone rooted. Inhale, reach up through the left arm. Exhale, reach up and over to the right again. Keep both shoulders back. Then this time, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, sweep the left hand down. Keep the arm along the wall. Feel like you're pressing against an imaginary wall at the palm. And let the right ear hang in its own weight. Keep both shoulders back. Keep the ribs softening back. Breathe deeply. I love using the wall because it keeps us really honest. One more full deep breath. Good, then look down. Inhale, coming up. Sweep the right arm up. Keep both shoulders against the wall. And exhale, reach up and over to the left. Both shoulders pressing back. Right sit bone reaching down, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, sweep the right hand down. Like you're pressing against another wall out of your palm. Both shoulders back, root the right sit bone more, take a deep breath in. And exhale, let the left ear hang in its own weight and invite the left shoulder to reach away from the left ear. Breathe as deeply as you can. Keep pulling both shoulders back feeling a nice lengthening down the right side of the torso, as well as the trapezius area on the right side of the neck. 
Deepen the breath. Then look down. Inhale, come up. And exhale, gently release. Go ahead and come on to all fours on your mat with your toes tucked under, your heels all the way up the wall, fingers spread wide and the wrist directly under the shoulders. So press through the finger pads where your fingerprints are, hug the outer arms in, take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, bow inward, look all the way at your navel. Then initiate from the tailbone, inhale, lift the tailbone, keep pressing back through the heels, melt the heart down without bending the elbows, broaden the collarbones, and exhale, round the spine. Heels press back, navel pulls toward the spine. Initiate from the tailbone, inhale, lift the tailbone, then lower the belly, melt the heart, broaden the collarbones, hug the arms, lift the heart, exhale, round. Adding the simple mantra, I am breathing in. Keep the integrity of the pose. I am breathing out. One more time. Inhale to melt, broaden the collarbones, hug the arms in. Exhale to round. Inhale to a flat back. And come to the tips of the fingers. Keep the heels pressing at the wall. Crawl the hands forward. Lift the under sides of the arms. Deep breath in. And exhale, chin or forehead down. Stay with the mantra of the breath. One more breath. And then flatten the palms and flatten the forearms and slide forward into a forearm plank. Elbows directly under the shoulders, heels press back, engage the core, broaden the collarbones. Heels press back as much as you can, navel pulling toward the spine, heart radiating forward. Find your breath. Look right in between your hands to keep the neck in line with the rest of the spine. Breathe as deeply as you can. Keep engaging the core. Deep breath in and exhale gently lower down. And keep the toes curled, heart lifting, breath deepening. One more time, activating the core a little bit more here. Engage the abdominal muscles, come back up into a forearm plank. Now keep the hips as buoyant as they are, heels pressing back, deep breath in. Exhale, tap the knees down, navel toward the spine, and inhale, come up. So as you tap the knees down, the heels will come a little off the wall, navel toward the spine, and inhale. But the hips remain buoyant. Exhale to lower. Inhale, press back through the heels, radiate the heart. Exhale, tap the knees down. Inhale, up. One more time. Exhale, navel toward the spine as you tap the knees down. Inhale, up. And exhale, lower into sphinx. Deepen the breath. And then bring the hands under the shoulders. Inhale, come to all fours with the hands a little bit in front of the shoulders. And exhale, downward facing dog with the feet up the wall. Hug the outer arms in, melt the heart back, Scoop the gluteal muscles down and deepen your breath. Let the head just hang and just visualize the crown of the head opening up, a cranial dump. Releasing any worries, any fears. Let it just seep into the earth. Like compost. And then inhale, step the right foot between your hands. Take as many steps as you need to. Keep the left heel all the way connected to the wall. Tips of the fingers, anchor the right hip crease back, heart radiating forward. Breathe deeply. So you can take the ball of the foot a little bit forward. So the ball of the foot doesn't have to be on the wall, but the heel stays connected. And notice the right hip often wants to go out to the right, 
hug it in, reach the right hip crease back. So the right hip crease reaches back, down, and towards your left heel. And as you do that, you create more space to elongate out through the right side of the torso. You're welcome to place blocks or boxes or stacks of books under your hands if you wish. Keep radiating the heart forward, deepening your breath, and breathe into the sensations. Again, the wall, it just keeps us really honest. We begin to activate the muscles as they were meant to be activated in these poses. One more full deep breath. And then flatten your palms using abdominal muscles to come straight into a plank pose. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the left foot between the hands. Tips of the fingers. Again, the right ball of the foot and toes might come a little forward. Right heel pressing back. Left hip crease pulls back. Scoop the gluteal muscle down and anchor it all the way toward the right heel while bending the left knee deeper to elongate the left side of the torso. Heart radiating forward, breath deepening. Stay in the moment. How do we stay in the moment? We stay with the breath. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. As we stay with the mantra, other thoughts will still come into the mind because we are human. However, as we stay with the mantra, we then become the witness of the thoughts. Rather than the thoughts just running away, we become the one watching the thoughts. And in this way, we then have the opportunity to choose whether we want to continue thinking in that way or to release what is no longer serving us. Flatten the palms, use the abdominal muscles, inhale to plank pose, heels back, heart forward, and exhale, lower all the way down. Now as you go down, you can even lower the knees. Reach the heart forward, keep the core engaged so that the belly and the chest lower at the same time. As you reach forward, there should be room now to press down through the tops of the feet, and if not, just shimmy forward a little bit. Heads of the shoulders going back, press through the tops of the feet. Inhale, heart forward, shoulders back. And exhale again, downward facing dog. This time, walk your hands back, walk your feet a little forward. Soften the knees, inhale all the way up. Reach the arms up and exhale to the heart. Now go ahead and face the wall. And bring your right foot out a little to the right at an angle and the left foot up the wall so that the heel and the knee are in one line as you bend your left knee. Scoop the left gluteal muscle down again toward the right heel and bend the knee deeply. And if we reach your arms out, this is actually warrior two. Take the outer left arm to the inner left thigh. And you can keep the elbow bent or reaching on down. I like keeping the elbow bent. Hand to the hip and pull back through the shoulders. So scoop down through the gluteal muscle. Press the right inner thigh back. So we're not locking out the knee, but the leg is strong. Root down through the right heel. As you root down, inhale, sweep the right arm up. Pretend like there's a wall behind you. And exhale, reach the arm up and overhead. Left gluteal muscle reaching down. Again, so you create length on both sides of the body and just reach up and over. Do whatever feels good on the neck. You can look under the right arm. You can look toward the wall. You can even let the head hang in its own weight. Whatever you choose, deepen the breath. This is extended side angle pose. You see Taparshva Konasana. Couple more breaths, just at a different angle at the wall. One more breath. Good. Now take your right arm out to the right and straighten the right leg. Scoop the right gluteal muscle down. Bring the right hand to the wall. Sorry, left hand to the wall, to the outside of the foot. Right arm reaches back. Pretend like there's a wall behind you. Pull both shoulders back. Deepen the breath. 
You can look toward the wall and keep the head neutral. You may look towards your right hand, whatever feels good. Keep scooping left gluteal muscle down. This is triangle with one foot up the wall. And breathe as deeply as possible. Take a deep breath in. So bend your knee again, re-bend the knee. Sweep the arm up and over extended side angle pose. One more breath. Deep breath in and exhale back to Uthita Trikonasana. Shoulders back. Good. And then bend the knee, root through the right foot. You can use your hand if you'd like to help release the foot down. Now bring your hands at the wall. Walk your hips back to a downward dog at the wall a different way. Breathe deeply. Hug the outer arms in. Scoop the gluteal muscles down. Melt the heart. You can even add a few undulations through the spine here. If that feels good, exhaling down, inhale, exhale. And come all the way up. And now bring your right leg up the wall. So left foot turns out and bring the hand to the hip crease, right hip crease, anchor the hip back down and towards your left heel. Walk the heel up enough that as you bend the knee, the shin is parallel to the ground. Bring the right arm to the inside of the right leg. Root down through the little toe side of the left foot and through the heel. Inhale, circle the left arm up and exhale, reach up and over. Bend the left knee deeper. Press the left inner thigh back and deepen the breath as much as you can. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. Continue that mantra. Stay in the stillness of the pose with the mantra. Get to know the nature of your mind. Then take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, take the left hand down. Straighten the right leg in your mount. Right fingertips to the outside of the right ankle. Again, scoop the Right hip crease back, down and toward the left heel. Shoulders pulling back like you're pressing against a wall. Broaden the collarbones, deepen the breath. Look in whatever direction feels best for your neck. And stay with your breath. Breathe into what we call in yoga, the sensations. One more full deep breath here. Bend your right knee. Bring the arm to the inside again. Deep breath in. So reach your arm up and over. Stay with your breath. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. Feeling a deep sense of peace. Deep breath in. And exhale one more time with Sita Trikonasana. And then again, bend the knee. Face toward the wall. Hands to the wall. Hips reaching back. Deep breath in. And exhale, melt through the heart. I am breathing in. And I am breathing out. And then come all the way up. And now facing the wall again, both feet pointing forward. Bring your right leg up the wall. Square off the hips. Scoop right hip crease down. Elbows point back. Broaden the collarbones. You may stay here. Or maybe left fingertips to the wall. Inhaling right arm up and exhaling as you open up. Deepen the breath. I am breathing in. I am breathing out.
And then inhale, reach the arm up. Exhale, forward or hands to the hips, bend the right knee. Bring the right foot down and bring the left foot up. And then again, square off the hips and scoop the left gluteal muscle down and that left hip crease reaching back. Shoulder blades wide and elbows back. Deepen the breath. And then inhale, sweep the right arm up. And exhale, reach the right hand toward the wall. It's okay if it doesn't touch the wall. Inhale, left arm up. And exhale, reach back. Broaden the collarbones. Deepen the breath. Breathe into the hamstring. Breathe into the opening of the heart. One more breath. And inhale, reach up. And exhale, both hands to the wall. Bend the knee and gently release. Feet hip distance apart. Shift the weight to the left foot. Bend your right knee. Grab hold of the outer right foot. So a couple of options. If you want to really play around with the balance, grab the foot with both hands. And if you do that, press to the big toe mound, kick the foot back, keep the pelvis square, or you can just hold with the right hand and use the wall to help with balance. But notice our right hip wants to reach out, anchor the front of the frontal hip point called the iliac crest down toward the ground, and then kick the foot back. So either again, holding onto the wall or holding with both. Hands, you can bend the left knee as much as you need to. Press through the big toe mound, one more breath. And gently release. Release the right foot down. Spread the toes wide, shift the weight to the right foot. Bend the left knee. Maybe grab with both hands. Lift through the waist as you inhale. Hinge forward as you exhale, kick the foot back. Deepen the breath. Again, at any time, you're welcome to reach the right hand to the wall. Deepen the breath. Stay with the mantra of the breath. And if you find you're wobbling a bit like I was, just touch the wall again. So yoga practice, not yoga perfection. One more breath. And come all the way up. Hands to the heart. Go ahead and bring your left heel to the wall, right foot forward. Now, if you have a block, take a block upright, either inside or outside of the right ankle. If you don't have a block, it's okay. You don't need one. Hands to the hips, square off the hips. The so feet are gonna be anywhere between three and a half and four and a half feet apart. I always prefer to have the sit bone in line with the heel, so more hip distance apart, even though it's traditionally taught heel to heel. Um, honor what feels good in your body. Square off the hips. Inner thighs back, gluteal muscles scoop down. Inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale, fold forward with the right hand on the hip. Pull the right hip crease back, down, and again toward the left heel. It engages the core, reach forward a little more, and then exhale, hand to the block. If you don't have a block, can just reach it to the shin or to the inside, whatever feels good in your body, and then sweep the right arm up. Now keep the hips as square as you can here in revolved triangle. If you're using a block, then you can come up a little higher and then really open through the heart. Right hip crease anchoring back, breath deepening. One more breath. Do whatever feels good on the neck. Right hand down, move the block to the other side. Hands to the hips as you come up. Step the left foot forward, right foot back. Hands at the hips, square them off. Inhale, reach the right arm up. Exhale, fold forward, anchor left hip crease back, down and toward the right heel. Notice how that lifts the lower abdomen. Inhale, reach a little further forward. And exhale, hand down. Maybe fingertips come to the inside of the right foot or a stack of books. Maybe you have a block and you place it outside the foot. Either way is fine. Anchor left hip crease back. Scoop gluteal muscle down. 
reach heart forward, and then reach the left arm up. Do whatever feels good on the neck. Deepen the breath. Broaden through the collarbones. Stay with the breath and press through the left big toe mound, right heel anchoring back toward the wall. One more breath. Good, then bring the hand down, hands to your hips, root down and rise up. Go ahead and remove the block. And bring, um, if you have a blanket, you may want a blanket to cushion your knee. It's okay if not, I usually don't use one. Um, a towel, anything works really. So come into all fours. There's not really a graceful way of coming into this one. So we want to take the left knee as back, back as far toward the wall as we can and bring the right foot forward. Hands to the inside, left toes pointing up the wall. Press the hips forward and breathe as deeply as you can into the hips. And begin to feel that awakening here in the hip flexor and into the quad. Breathe as deeply as possible. This is often when the mind starts to check out or maybe you're like, you know what, I've done enough. I encourage you to stay with it and to breathe into the sensations. You may stay here or slide the right heel back. Again, anchoring right hip crease down. There's a tendency to hike the right hip up and hands to the thigh, hips toward the wall, maybe even shoulders toward the wall. Soften back through the abdomen, breathe. Breathe into the sensations. Breathe through the thoughts. Breathe through the emotions, no matter what's going on. The breath will always help us find our center. And when we are centered, then everything becomes clear. Bring your hands down, root down through the right foot to lift the left leg up. You can hop the foot forward a bit. We want the heel directly under the knee and hip. So you may, some of you may come closer to the wall, more like a standing split. Honor what works for you. One more breath, try not to lock out the standing knee. And then exhale, gently reach down. Bring the left foot forward under the right knee and bring the right foot up the wall. Hands to the inside of the foot, press the hips forward and breathe into the sensations. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. Find a rhythm to your breath. Slow down the breath. Find a deep sense of calm in the mind. And as you're ready, hips reach back a bit more. Slide the left heel back. Anchor the left hip crease down. Breathe as deeply as you can. Again, watch how that hip wants to go out. Anchor it down and back and in. It's okay if the shoulders don't touch the wall. You can play with it, but if that means the ribs are jutting forward, soften the ribs back. Deepen the breath. One side often feels differently than the other. So breathe into it. One more breath here. Then bring your hands down, root down through the left foot. Take the right leg up. Bring the foot forward or back without locking the knee. Deepen the breath as much as you can. Breathe into the hamstring and into the hips. 
It's okay if the right hip reaches a little out to the side. Just invite it down a bit. And then gently release. A few options here. One option is to just bring both feet up the wall, lying on your back, which we will, we're eventually gonna end in that pose anyway. If you would like to do a handstand, you're welcome to do that too. We've warmed up all of the muscles um, needed to really do a handstand. So I'm gonna show you a couple ways of doing it. Um, one way, is starting just like we began, the heels at the wall, fingers spread wide, hug the outer arms in, engage the core, and broaden the collarbones. And keeping the shoulders over the wrist, lift the hips up, look right between the hands, then bring one foot up, just about halfway up, and then the other foot, and you straighten the legs until you're making like an upside down L shape, and then scoop the gluteal muscles toward the heels. You may stay here, maybe you lift one leg up, and then maybe the other leg as well. Breath deepening. And then slowly come down. You may do that one again. Or for the last one, if you'd like to kick up into it, hands about six inches away from the wall, spread the fingers wide, hug the outer arms in, Broaden the collarbones, tuck the toes, engage the core. Shoulders remain over the wrist as you lift the hips. So not quite into a downward dog. Lunge one foot forward. This leg becomes your spring, the other one your lever. If you're kicking up, I'm gonna suggest you do it twice so that you do both legs. Shoulders over the wrist, lunge off the right foot, and just gently, you might take a few kicks up so that we just gently spring up, heels press up, inner thighs toward the wall, breath deepening as much as you can. Maybe play around with bringing one foot or both feet off the wall. And if you sprung up, then bring the other foot forward, shoulders over the wrist, and play around, kicking up the other way as well. Maybe a little softer than I just did. And when you do come down, stay as long as you'd like, then rest for a moment in child's pose. Breathe into your back. And now, come all the way to the wall hips to the wall, pubic bone touching the wall, tuck the toes, fingertips at the wall pointing up, elbows in line with the wrist, roll the shoulders back, think like cobra pose, heart lifting, shoulders back. You can keep the chin to the chest, you can gaze up, you can gaze back. You may stay here or maybe bring the hands at the lower back pressing the pubic bone even more toward the wall, lifting the heart up, squeezing the elbows in. And if you can keep the pubic bone glued to the wall, perhaps you bring the hands back and gaze forward. Maybe you gaze back, keeping the, the neck long, stress in a camel pose. Two more breaths. And hands to the back if they're on the heels. Slowly come up, sit back, palms up, heart lifted, and just feel the effects. Without any haste, as you're ready, sit off to one side and bring your feet up the wall. Bring your hands just down like a Cactus, breathe deeply. If you have enough room, you may take your legs out into a straddle or bend the knees, kind of like a um, frog pose on your back. Just breathe as deeply as you can.
I am breathing in. I am breathing out. Slowly down the breath even more. You can stay here or use your hands to bring the legs up and together. Bringing outer right ankle over left thigh, flex the foot, press the thigh away from you. You can stay here. You can even bring this a little away from you if you'd like to slide the left heel down any amount and breathe deeply. Allow it to be somewhat restorative. Flex the right foot a lot. Feel the beautiful stretch of the gluteal area. And if the left knee's bent, reach it up. Right leg up the wall, outer left ankle to the right thigh. Flex the foot. Press the left thigh away from you. Maybe stay here or slide the right heel down. Deepen the breath. Beautiful opening of the hip and decompression of the lower back. One more breath. And slide the right heel up, bring the left leg up, get in as close to the wall as you can. And just rest here for a modified Shavasana, feet up the wall, getting the extra drainage of the stagnant fluid away from the feet and ankles. If this is not comfortable, you're welcome to lie flat on your back. Relax your feet and toes. Your feet and toes are completely relaxed. Relax your ankles, calves, and shins. Stagnant fluid draining away. Relax your knees and your thighs. Muscles relaxed, stagnant fluid draining away. Relax your hips and your lower back. Feel your lower back spill out into the earth. Relax your middle and your upper back. Shoulder blades melt down. Relax your abdomen and chest. Internal organs soften, functioning perfectly. Relax your neck and shoulders. Feel the weight of the world melt away. Relax your arms, wrists, and hands. Hands remain open and receptive to all positivity and possibility. Perhaps touching your thumb to your index finger, thumbprint, touching fingerprint, Gyana Mudra, and begin to feel your energy circulating within your own body. Relax your jaw, separate your teeth. Right cheek melting to the right. Left cheek melting to the left. Temples and forehead completely relaxed. Scalp completely relaxed. Deep 
deep sense of stillness in the body. Skin softening more and more. Begin deepening the breath. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Bend your knees into your chest. Roll off to one side. And gently press up to sitting. Bring your hands to your heart. And thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.